Okay, I'd like to start by telling you guys a story about a, an archaeologist in Australia by the name of Jim Bowler. Way back, he was the guy that found Lake Mungo 3, or Mungo Man as it's called. And way back then, he uh, made the prediction or analysis, and he said it's a 45,000 year old skull. And of course, that was a bit of a problem because it only just fitted into the out of Africa theory, but that was okay. And Bowler was happy with that. Now, what happened soon after? It's another guy called Alan Thorne. Did some dating. Now, Bowler did his dating on geography, a geology, right? It was about 300 metres away. Alan Thorne did his work on the two, on the skull itself, on the burial site, and he came up with a, a date of around 63 to 65,000 years. Three different methods were used. Now, Bowler was really against that. He said that. He said at the time it's wrong. And the major reason he felt it was wrong was because it didn't fit into the out of Africa theory. And he made that point at the time. And of course, all of mainstream were fully behind him. They all said, no, no, it can't be right, it can't be right. So that was the end of that. And soon after, Jim Bowler, along with two other people, Peter Owendike and Gurdup Singh, they did some work at Great Barrier Reef. And they signed off on a date where charcoal, huge deposits of charcoal started to appear 186,000 years ago and continued on. And they all agreed, and they were correct in doing so, this was a great example of fire stick farming taking place on the Great Barrier Reef 186,000 years ago. And Jim Bowler signed off on that, and you would have thought, hang on for a sec, he's the one who's defending Lake Mungo being 45,000 years, but is happy to sign off on something that's four times older. But anyway, he may have forgotten about it. Maybe he wasn't confident with the, the way the work was done, and that's how it was left. Now, soon after, Gurdup Singh went to Lake George and got a a date of human occupation of 126,000 years, but they ignored that too. So let's ignore it like everyone else has done and carry on and move forward. And now what happens is we go to a place called Moijal, which is Point Ritchie and near Warrnambool in Victoria. And about two and a half years ago, he announced a new date from there, which was 90,000 years. 80 to 90,000 with a good chance it was 90,000 years. And what Bowler said was, yeah, the science is good, and it is. It's up top class, sophisticated. The latest advances in science, thermoluminescence, all the right things were done. The date is right, but he said he wanted more proof, which is a bit unusual because he actually had proof from not uh, Great Barry Reef, but maybe like I'm just the same as me. When my wife sends me shopping, I always forget something on the list, and maybe he just forgot it, so I'm prepared to put up with it. Now, we had assumed that date of 90,000 years he put out three years ago, he wouldn't go back there. And credit where credit's due, we were wrong. He did go back. In fact, he's been there for 11 years working on that site. And what he's now announced is he's got a date of 120,000 years in Victoria, down the south. Now, I've got to make a point. I've seen a couple of articles where they've made that the entry point. It can't be. If, and I don't believe it's right for one second, but if... Africans came to Australia, they came from the top end. That's been the theory that every theorist who believes in out of Africa theory believes that they came to the top end first in a small group and settled around there. And as the years went on, they started to spread. And they worked out that it would take about 20,000 years to get to the bottom half, the southern part of Australia, and then they were going through the mountain, in through the rivers. And finally, the dry inland would be the last part to be settled. Now, no one's argued with that settlement pattern and they've been comfortable with it, but you need to understand all of those theories have a 20,000-year gap from the very north to the very south, which is where Warrnambool is. So that means the entry date is not 120,000 years, but 140. Now, we read his work. And we read reports on this one. And what Bowler has said, all credit to him, is he's convinced. As far as he's concerned, the dates are right. And he said it asked lots of questions, none of which he's raised, but he knows it does. And the major question it raises is this. We were told that the original people got here when I was a kid, 20,000 years, then it went to 40, then 45, then 50, 55, 60. It sounds like an auctioneer at the moment. 65 it's up to because they found an axe up the top, which was 65,000 years old. That's a minimum date, guys. We don't know when they first got there. The axe was dropped. We don't know how long they've been there when they got there, so it's silly to say that. But anyway, now we're up to 140. 
And there's not one theory on the planet that says Africans leaving Africa 140,000 years ago. So what does that tell us about the out of Africa theory? It goes like this. We wrote over 10 years ago in one of our books, Constructing a New World Map, that it was out of Australia, not Africa. And not one person backed us up. No academic that's paid in any group that holds a posting stood by us. They all said, you're wrong. Jim Bowler says we're right. He says we've got a date here of entry in Australia of at least 140,000 years, but hang on, he didn't even say that. He just said there's lots of questions that have been asked by this, and he knows what one of them is. When I was told way back, when Wilson and Cairn first wrote about Homo sapiens coming into existence, they reckon it happened between 150 to 200,000 years ago. And now they're saying just as they turned Homo sapiens, they left Africa. No, they didn't. No one's ever said that before. What that actually tells us is the out of Africa theory is now officially pronounced dead. And I've written an article about it, and I actually used John Cleese's dead parrot skit to explain how it had been nailed against the perch and held up for quite some time when it was already dead, and we said that 10 years ago, but now it's gone. It's finished. The story is over. The out of Africa theory never came into existence. There are people in Australia that we hear 140,000 years ago. And ladies and gentlemen, we believe we have the skulls and we've actually written quite a few articles about it. And there'll be more coming out. Skulls of no forehead beings with massive brains, much bigger than ours, huge eyes, incredibly long humeruses and virtually have nothing. that look nothing like any hominin, homo sapien or any other type of in that you can think of. They look nothing like them. And they are in Australia, and we've actually found now five different places where they exist. So, the very best that can come out of the Af out of Africa theory is that 60,000 years ago, some Africans came here, but when they came here, someone had been here for at least 80,000 years, so it wasn't empty. That's the best you can get out of it. But I don't think that's true. I don't think anyone ever came to Australia. And the oldest beings on this planet come from Australia and went to other places further down the line. Yeah, 10 years ago, no one believed it was right. Nor did Jim Bowler. But now he's saying 120, 140,000 years is a bare minimum date. And I said, all he's got to say about this is there's so many questions that haven't been answered. The trick is, Bowler's date will come out. They'll hope it'll disappear. And there'll be so many questions that will never be asked. And that's the big problem here. They won't ask these questions because now what it proves is through science alone that what we said over 10 years ago is now correct. And we've had to wait a decade for the academics to catch up to the theory we produced, introduced 10 years ago and knew to be correct then. That is, original people do, are not African. They have no genetic links to Africans. They have no Y chromosome links to Africans. They are not Africans. And what this now tells us is that whatever they are, we know now that they can't be African because there was somebody already here. And the being we have, and we have these beings, you just have to look them up on our website, are certainly not African. They're not Asian. They're not European. They're not anything. They don't look like any other being that's ever been on this planet. So what does that tell us about Australia? Well, according to Bowler, what it tells us is this. There are a lot of questions that have been asked or should be asked, and at the moment, Nobody has the answers. Well, can I suggest, while you cling on to the out of Africa theory, you'll never find the answer. That's not how it works out. The way it finishes is, it started in Australia, ends in Australia, and starts again. And what we've got to work out is, what's this ending about? Because we know what the start is now. It's much more ancient, begins in Australia, with beings that don't make sense, living at a place and a time, according to academics, never happened until Bowler's read our work. Now, I found one comment Bowler made near the end of his affirmation quite interesting. What he said was this. He said he understands the sceptics and fully is comfortable with the sceptics. And so he should be because he was one of them too. But then he said this. It's okay to a sceptic until they see the next part of our research. And what he was saying is you can be sceptical. We haven't finished. I'm not got a feeling there's more dates to come out of Warrnambool or Moigel or Point Ritchie, whatever you want to call it. And I think those dates are going to be even older. So what that means is the whole story of Australia 
There's nothing that's certain anymore. And nobody should be teaching any of our children that Africans got here 60,000 years ago and it was empty. That's a lie. Bell approved it. He's proved it three times over. At Great Barrier Reef with 186,000 years. At Moigel, Point Ritchie, with 90,000 years. And then again, 120,000 years. And they found a hearth. They think it's a hearth. It's stones that were blackened and cooked, used for cooking in a midden, which is what original people did. So what does that tell us? We're going to start again. And we're going to throw out the rubbish, and the rubbish is Africa, out of Africa, coming from Africa, and start it all over again in Australia. And here you'll get the right answer. Okay, the article's shorter this time, so people might read it. It's only one and a half thousand words. And yeah, it is about archaeology, but it's also about history, our ancestry, and the evolution of human beings. And there's a kink here, and a big one, and nobody knows how to deal with it unless you throw out the old teachings and bring in the new.